Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to be presenting some of the most important abstracts from EHA, or the European Hematologic Association's annual meeting in 2024. I'm going to be talking now on patient reported outcomes, or PRO, based recurrent symptom deterioration and how it predicts disease progression results from the Alpine study. And let me start with the bottom line. Patients uh, reported increased fatigue predicts progression in relapsed refractory CLL, SLL, at least for patients on ibrutinib and zanabrutinib. This research uh, was done by Dr. Jennifer Brown, who led a group of investigators. She works at Dana-Farber, and she gave an e-poster at the European Hematologic Association's annual meeting, EHA, in Madrid. In the way of background, patient-reported outcomes, or PROs, are increasingly being recognized as an important measure in cancer research. And fatigue is perhaps the most common and most disturbing symptom in chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma. And its worsening can be associated with worsening anemia or other causes. The aim of this study was to search for a link between reported symptom progressions such as fatigue and others, and did that correlate with how the disease was doing? How was the disease progressing? Did it correlate with progression-free survival? Let's look at the methods and the participants. The Alpine study was a study that compared ibrutinib to a zanabrutinib in relapsed refractory CLL SLL. This particular abstract re examined that data, not primarily to compare the two drugs, which was already done, but rather to see the predictive utility of any patient's reported outcome. To best do this, Patients reported fatigue and pain deterioration were quantified as discrete, transient, and recurrent events. There's a total of 604 patients to study. Studied. Let's look at the results. Almost a quarter, 149 or 24.8% of patients had no fatigue events. 249 or 41% um, had uh, one event, 95 or 15% had two events, 65 or 10.8% uh, had three events, 33 or 55 had four events, 10 or 1.7 had five events, and one poor fellow or woman had six fatigue events respectively. Patients were excluded if they experienced no symptoms or no progression by study N. Increasing fatigue was significantly associated with an increasing risk of progression, regardless of whether the patient was on ibrutinib or on zanibrutinib. Increasing pain deterioration was associated with an increased risk of fatigue events. So let's discuss this and draw some conclusions. Recurrent fatigue deterioration events proved able to predict the risk of disease progression before disease progression was confirmed by the investigators. This suggested that patient-reported outcomes could be useful indicators as to when therapy might need to be modified. There are plans to study more uh, patient-reported outcomes to see if other symptoms might also be helpful. It seems patients may often know what's going on in their bodies before the labs or the physical findings confirm their suspicions. On the website, we provide a link to the actual abstract, 
patient reported outcomes, pros, based recurrent symptom deterioration, predicts disease progression, results from the Alpine study. Thanks for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together. Dr. Brian Kaufman. Thank you.